Hello, my name is Emma Berry and I'm an e-learning developer and instructional designer. And in this short video series, I am going to take you through some storyline hints and tips to hopefully speed up any processes and solve those little bugs that storyline can sometimes come with. So today we are going to have a look at trigger order and how this can impact your e-learning's functioning. So if you've got an e-learning that's got lots of triggers and variables, sometimes you may find things just aren't running as they should be. So in this example, we've got a quiz based e-learning here. And as the learner answers the questions, depending on the choices they make, um, depends on the number of points they get. At the end of the e-learning, depending on the points they have, depends on the character profile they get given or shown. So we've got our variable here, which I've put um, to display so that we can see this kind of working. And it's set at zero, um, so it's called compassion score. And this will go up as the learner answers each question. So let's just try it out to begin with and see if it is working. Okay, so let's just choose an answer. And as you can see, our variables changed at, uh, stayed at zero. So this variable should have changed either to one, two or three, depending on the answer that I chose. So why might this be? Well, if we close the preview and we go back to our triggers panel on the right hand side, we can see that our jump to slide, so jump to question two trigger is at the top of the list. And underneath, we've got the triggers that tell our variable to change. So to set our variable to three, two or one, depending on the answer. So you can think of trigger list a little bit like an instruction list. Storyline is going to go down these one by one in this order. So if we're telling Storyline to jump to the next slide, it's doing this before it's actually had chance to change the variable. So this is really easy to amend. Just click on your trigger and just drag it down the list to the bottom. So now what we can see is that when the user clicks submit, it's going to change our variable first before we jump to the next slide. So let's test this now and check that it's working. Okay, so let's choose our same answer again. So our middle answer and click submit. And there we go. You can see our zero has now changed to two. Now, of course, this isn't the only reason why some of your triggers might not be working or your variables might not be working, but it's always the first port of call for me is to check your triggers list and ensure that anything you want to happen before the user goes to another slide or another layer is always at the top of the list and above the jump to slide or layer action. And there we go.